need to get a, a good car. When we get home, I'll get you one when we get home. I'll get you one when we get home. Not away. Wrong way there. <laughs> the two doctors. <laughs> so, Hello, how are you? Which class is this? People. Okay. Good morning, madam. No. Today, a small country has like 3 million people. It's like the size of Accra, the population. And Sweden uh, is in Eastern Europe. Do you know what Europe is? Yes. Europe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, uh, I'm also medical student, and today we're going to talk about three main subjects. The malaria, the disease probably all of you know, the CPR and Heimlich's maneuver, it's like means of uh, the fast phase, and then the sexually transmitted illnesses, okay? So we're going to start with malaria, which I'm sure you all know a lot about. So put your hand up if you've ever had malaria. Who has no one ever had malaria? No? Yeah. Well, that you've never had malaria? That's good. good. Does anybody know what happens to you when you get malaria? You start to feel a bit hot, you get a fever, um, you feel sick, uh, you get a headache, uh, you get some muscle aches, you just feel a bit horrible, really. So it's not very nice disease, so it's one that we want to try and prevent. So does anybody know how we catch malaria? Anyone? Pardon? Yeah? How do you catch malaria? How, how can you get malaria? Who gives you malaria, do you know? Yes. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> okay, please. Please. Yeah, mosquitoes. It's horrible, it's the horrible little mosquitoes come and bite you. They give you malaria. So, does anybody know what time the mosquitoes come out and try and bite you? Yeah? A lot of less mosquitoes. Pardon? A female mosquito. Yeah, yeah. Good. female mosquito, that's good. So they come out at night when it gets dark. So that's why when you're outside playing at night, we want you to wear long sleeves and long trousers, okay? And then who sleeps? Who here sleeps with a mosquito net? Anybody? Good. That's, that's one of the best things you can do to prevent yourself from getting malaria. Sleep with a mosquito net. They stop you from coming in in the night and bite you. Does anybody use mosquito repellent? Yes. Good, good. So if you're wearing your long sleeves, your long trousers, you've got mosquito repellent on any exposed skin, you're sleeping with a mosquito net. And you've got small chance of getting malaria. Okay. So what do you do if you think you have malaria? What should you do? Anyone? Yeah, that's a good idea. But what else would you do? What's the first thing you should do if you think you've got malaria? Hmm? No, you should go to the doctor. 
Yes? Thing. You can think you have malaria. You need to go and see a doctor. Because malaria doesn't seem like that bad a disease. But if you leave it for long enough, it can cause coma and it can also cause death. So it's really important that if you think you've got malaria, that you go to the doctor. The doctor will give you some medicine and it should clear up within a few days, okay? Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to move on to some first aid now. So, David. Okay. Okay, and uh, I would like you to uh, lie on the floor. Lie on the back. No. On the floor, it should. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. that's it. Accident happens. He's not breathing. Yeah, let's see. We just saw a person lying somewhere. The first thing you must do is to get him out of danger. Let's see, if it's like a burning house, house is burning, fires everywhere, pieces falling, you have to get the person from the house. If it's like road accident, cars passing by, you have to get him off the road. First thing. Then you make you have to make sure if he has functions or not. Let's see. If the person is dying, not talking anything, you can shout at him, ask questions. If he doesn't answer, you can actually slap him away. <laughs> If he does not, if he does not, you have to check if he's breathing. You can put your hand on the chest Sorry. and then you can actually feel it. It's going up and down. If not, you can hold like fingers like that and you can feel the air, air passing by. If not, that means the person is out of conscience and probably his heart is not working. So CPR stands for cardio, which means heart, pulmonary, which means lung, and resuscitation, which means uh, revival. So we have to like uh, keep the heart beating and uh, keep the lungs breathing. This is the mean of this uh, measure, CPR. So if he's unconscious and he's not breathing, probably his heart is not beating too. So first thing you have to do are compressions. Okay? Uh, compressions are then with the hands held like this. One hand like uh, facing the wall and other hand on top. Can you do that? Yes. Can all of you do that? Yes. Please try. <laughs> You have to press and put those hands on his breastbone, which is bone here, like in the middle of his chest, on the heart. And then follow with the compressions. You have to do 30 of them. Your hands and your shoulders have to be straight because. Uh, because uh, you might get tired because it takes 10, 20, maybe 30 minutes and it's done really fast. It's done like 100 times per minute and you have, you have to do like 30 times, understand? 30 compressions. I'm not showing now uh, with all of full my strength because he's conscious and he might feel pain but one person is unconscious, he doesn't feel any pain and you can, cannot hurt him. Whatever you do, we are saving his life. If you do nothing, he will die. But if he, he will, uh, I say, I will do this, maybe I'll crush his uh, ribs or do something bad, but he will be alive. So the first thing is you can do no harm. So 30 compressions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then follows the two breaths of life. Skull. When you have to exhale air into the uh, person's mouth for well, his lungs to be working again. No, I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> it's just I'll show how it's done. You have to tilt this head back. Just relax your head, okay? Just relax. Just, just relax. You lift his, his neck and the head goes back. Then the airways open up. Then you have to open his mouth and you must like pinch his nose like that because if you Breathe in, and the air will go out through the nose. Yep. So hold the nose and do two breaths. One, two, like. And you have to see, his chest should rise a bit. Just a bit. And this is one cycle. 30 compressions and two breaths. And you keep doing this. Let's see, this is measure is only to keep the heart beating and the, the blood flowing just for time until he gets to hospital because 
this uh, alone it probably won't save a person. Uh, to save a person, doctors need to use defibrillation. Uh, do you know what is defibrillation? No? It's like two metal pads. Probably have seen in movies when doctors charge them electricity, put them in chest and... Yeah, only this can revive the person, keep his heart running again. So this is just a measure to keep him alive until he reaches the hospital. So really important thing, if you see a person like that, at first, if there are friends, it's good. If not, you have to call for help for other people. You tell those other people to get taxi, throw, throw, any passing car. You have to get the person in the car, and you, then you keep doing those things, compressions and breaths. Understand? And then get him to the hospital as fast as possible. So how many compressions do you have to do? Thirty. And how many breaths? Two. Yeah, and you have to keep repeating. Thirty and two. Thirty and two. Thirty and two and two. The hospital. Right, guys? Yes. Good. And this applies if you see you see a person and he's out in conscience and you don't know what happened to him. Can you stand up? Right. But if the person is, let's say, drowning, that means water got in his lungs and he cannot breathe. Uh, can you come again for one moment? <laughs> Show one more. Maneva, uh, and let's say if he was eating somewhere in the restaurant or just by the table and he started coughing a lot, it means he choked by food. The food is stuck in his airways and he cannot breathe. If he keeps up for a long time, if he like uh, about to collapse, if he looks maybe a bit blue, that means uh, he doesn't get enough air. Then you have to do a Heimlich's maneuver. I bet you all seen on it in the TV again. It is done from standing behind person's back. You have to take one fist like this with thumb facing you like that. You have to put it just below the rib cage, just below. You have to put one hand like this on that hand. And you have to do it strong and you must hold to yourself. This is how you help the foot or what is stuck in the airways to move through the uh, airways. This is how you get rid of this thing. It's like, uh, once again, I won't show it with full strength, but it's, this is how it should, like, should look like. What, two, three, four. Did you, until he, let's say, starts coughing or loses something from his mouth, that means he can breathe again. Oh, yeah, you can turn around. Yep, so one hand like this the, in the fist and the thumb is facing you. Put it just below the person's ribs and below his breastbone. Other hand on top and then quick moves. One, two, three, four, until the person loses what he has inside. Okay, understand? You guys, you want to practice? You can get into pairs. Can you get into pairs now? Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Thank you.